Kyle Rittenhouse. All right, so before we talk guilty or innocent, I want to talk about the impact he's going to have on this smash and grab epidemic. Now, right now we're going through the smash and grab epidemic and we're coming out of the COVID pandemic. Okay, so there's a lot going on with people attacking stores, attacking jewelry stores, grocery stores, clothing stores. Um, They attacked the Louis Vuitton store in San Francisco. It's all over the news. And what people don't understand is that, you know, that shopping center was already suffering from the COVID pandemic. Stores like Gap and H&M and Marshall's were already closed just from COVID. So these these couple of stores that are hanging on still surviving um they can't really they can't really stand all these thefts they can't really stand um all these smash and grabs so what stores are doing is you know they're up in security they're putting armed guards in front of the stores they're putting bars in the grocery stores if you read right here then they put the groceries they put the grocery carts inside of the store so people can't steal you know, they're they're overly enforcing security. You know, in my city, they're trying to hire 60 more police officers just to deal with the death epidemic. You know, they're, they're closing stores early. They're closing the main entrances and making it so there's one way in the store and one way out the store. You know, they don't want traffic coming in the store from all different angles. They want it just one direction so they could push that so they could push people out and let people in. You know, they're locking up all the product. This is the first time they've ever start putting fencing inside of the stores to block off products so people can't just run in and grab stuff. You know what I mean? So it's real crazy right now. Um, the whole thing about the theft in my area is that, you know, um, under $950, everything is a misdemeanor. So what they're trying to do is they're trying to charge conspiracy and that's a felony. So if the people are doing organized crime, organized thefts, then they're calling that a conspiracy and then they could charge a felony. But, you know, up until this time, a lot of people have just been getting off with this misdemeanor crap. And, you know, there's there's no real punishment for what they're doing. So I know you're thinking, how does this how does this fit in with Kyle and what he did? Okay, well, Kyle is a 17 year old kid who went to a protest for police brutality. Now, a lot of people are saying that he shouldn't have been there, but that's not what we're discussing right now. What we're discussing is how does this tie in to the smash and grabs and how would this affect the smash and grabs? All right, so. Some men advanced on Kyle when he was at the protest and they had guns and weapons and they actually threatened Kyle, attempted to kill him actually. And he managed to kill two of them and wound one of them. And he went to court for it and he was acquitted of all the charges. Now, a lot of people are mad because they think he was showing favoritism. They think that, you know, Uh, The judge was on his side and stuff like that. But I'm one of those people, I feel like the judge should have been on his side because, you know, whether he was black or white, Chinese, anything, if you know he's innocent and you understand the law, then, you know, you should show him favoritism because he's an innocent kid and he's in the court. But, you know, if I was if I was the judge and I'm black and the kid was black, then I mean, I was showing favoritism, too, because I knew he was innocent. So, like, I don't really understand that part of what people are saying. But either neither here nor there, what I'm trying to say is, is that this is all a message. You understand, like him getting off with no charges, you know, and what you have to understand is that we came out of the COVID pandemic. Now we're in the smash and grab epidemic. And pretty soon we're going to be in the food shortage epidemic. And we're going to be in the water shortage epidemic. And you have to understand how th- how these things are going to affect each other, right? So Kyle was acquitted of all charges for going to this this rally and patrolling the streets and trying to keep the peace, right? So what's going to happen when we have a food shortage and we have a water shortage and we have all these people going out 
to try to keep the peace on the streets and we and they know they won't be charged with anything you know they know that they know that they could shoot and they could defend and they'll be home for dinner you know what i mean so that creates a whole situation and you have to understand that these epidemics that we're going through they're going to keep coming so like i said we got the food shortage epidemic we all getting a taste of that the inflation epidemic you know we're all getting a taste of that and then the worst one is going to be the water the water shortage epidemic that's going to be the worst one in my opinion because we we get thirsty so easy you know what i mean so the way i feel about it is this is a message that you know you can go out arm and keep the peace when we're going through all these epidemics and when i look at that and when i think about that all i think is purge like this is the purge coming into fruition because you're gonna have these mobs patrolling the streets and whatever they deem is not right whatever they whoever they deem is a criminal Whoever they deem shouldn't be on the streets, you know, they're going to do what they want to do without fear of repercussions, without fear of going to jail. It's going to be a purge, you guys. Just like really look at it. I mean, I hate to sound like like the the speaker of doom, but I mean, this is where the purge is going to come from. And this is this is the beginning of it. These are the beginning stages I'm not saying that what Kyle did was a good thing. I'm not saying it was a bad thing, but I'm saying it's the beginning of like new laws. It's going to be harsher laws, you guys. Things can't keep going on the way that they are. And, you know, in a communist government, you know, people don't really own anything. So the theory is, is that nobody's going to steal because nobody owns anything. So when I look at this administration, and I noticed the way that they're trying to push out the land owners and push out the property owners and push out the small business owners. It, it kind of feels like the next step is to try to push like a, a communist type of agenda on us. You know what I mean? Because it's like they're trying to get rid of all the private property. They're trying to get rid of, you know, people owning things. They're trying to get rid of the farmers and stuff like that. And all I ever think is, like, why would Biden do this? Like, is he under some kind of control? Like, has he been compromised? It's, it's no way to really understand what's going through his head. But at the end of the day, you can't help but think that he's trying to push some type of communist agenda on the U.S. And that's really crazy to me. But... At the end of the day, Biden doesn't control the media and Trump definitely didn't control the media. Obama didn't control the media. Bush, he, he kind of seemed like he controlled the media a little bit. I'm not going to lie, but I mean, who overall controls it? Because I mean, these presidents get in and they get slaughtered by the media and it's crazy. It's like, have you ever seen this show called American Gods? And it seems like in the American gods, the media was alive and it was its own entity. And it seems like that's what we're going through these days. You know what I mean? Because if these food shortages continue, 